Good evening, T-Wolf Den, and welcome to tonight's non-region matchup as we invite the Soaring Eagles of Juan Diego Catholic High School to take on our Timpanogos Timberwolves. Uh, we apologize. It is uh, 6.51 now, but unfortunately you're probably not seeing this until about 9 o'clock. I'd like to thank the Alpine School District for giving us a nice new Wi-Fi system without providing information in order to give it to you live. But... However, we're here for you. You can watch it and, and still get a chance to see the game just a little bit later than usual. Uh, as always, I'm TJ Bertrand. Next to me is the, the original Grogu, Eric Schultz. Uh, so, Eric, what can you tell us a little bit about Juan Diego? Well, they're a really good team, ranked in the top 650 in the nation, and there's thousands of high schools. 15th overall in the state of Utah, and it's on the back of one man, Mr. Talon Valdez. Average is almost 20 points a game. He's one of those Swiss Army knives we talk about with almost every high school team in Utah, but he's the real deal. He's probably the shortest guy on the team, but he's definitely going to stand out tonight. T-Wolves are coming off a comeback victory uh, against Mountain View just down the street. Down for most of the game, even down by double digits, and definitely brought a good fourth quarter comeback to get that region win. You know, it's always good even to play some tough teams going into more region play next week in our other crosstown rival, Orem. So it's going to be exciting as, as we get there. What do you want to see out of the T-Wolves tonight? we got to see a fast start. We can't get behind like we have in some games. We can't be playing behind the scoreboard and the clock. Get out to a good start. Play within ourselves. But Jackson Holcomb is going to have to be the guy tonight from start to finish. I agree. It's going to have to come down to our speed. They've got the height. So we're going to have to get our speed. And that transition offense has just got to fly down the court, get to the basket. One last thing that we do want to do is uh, send out some thoughts and prayers to Coach Ingles' uh, father, who is um, trying to recover from COVID. We wish him well and wish him the best in the family there as well. We, we love that family. Coach has been a big supporter of these broadcasts, joined us last year. Not a better guy. And if anyone's going to beat this, it's him. He's such an amazing man. Take care, Coach Engel. We wish you the best. We love you.
Like, what's your favorite softball team? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're here with Coach Jeremiah Hartsock. Coach Hartsock, a couple minutes before tip-off. Who's the main player in Juan Diego for us to look out for? I mean, their, their whole team is great. they got a lot of great pieces, but uh, their Valdez kid, when you're averaging 20 points a game and you're number three in the state in 4A, uh, you know we got our hands full tonight. A lot of hype on their side. Is that why you went with Bentley for the start? Uh, he's just playing great in practice, giving a lot of energy, a lot of effort, and that's what we asked of our guys, and uh, we're looking forward to a big game from him tonight. Good luck tonight, and good luck to the James game this week. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you.
big change that you and I talked about off off camera here is AJ Bentley and definitely for that height advantage. And talking, I talked to with, uh, Coach Hartsock about that before the game. He said also AJ just played hard in practice. They wanted to reward him with the start tonight. Good for him. Tip off as the Golden Eagle win. One thing soaring I've, Eagle, sorry. Soaring Eagle, yeah. Soaring Eagle win the tip off there to start it. One thing I've always loved that Coach Eagle and the staff have done is reward those players that play hard in practice with starts or big minutes in a big game. There you go. Good steal for AJ right off the, the start. Yeah. Just getting in that passing lane and stopping it from getting through. Out to the corner for Romney. And it's good. Three. Romney's Already going to have a timeout Romney's right away by, by the Soaring Eagle. Coach did not like what he saw Whoa. to start off the bet. Wow. That is definitely not the start that Coach Trost was looking for there. No. And coming you know, out, so. Talking with him before the game, seems like an awesome guy. Like yeah. He was asking me, you know, if, how I announce these names. But when you're one of the top teams in the state, you expect perfection. You don't expect open threes from a team like Timpanogos, and you expect execution. That's why he's getting on them now. He's not letting them get away with the small things. And that's what makes a good team. And obviously the biggest thing is how are they going to react at this point, right? Well, and I don't think he's happy either. One more. Horns automatic. Yeah, one more horn. <laughs> Joe's the full and only to use 30 seconds, but still got to wait for the clock to run out. Yeah. Nothing I can do about that. Nope. It's on the time. Even though we, even though we're recorded, this ain't real t TV timeout. So. <laughs> That's great. <right. laughs> We don't have a guy with the red mitts or whatever that they have in college in the pros. Valdez. Misses, misses his first shot of the game. The other thing I'd be interested to see is, does Braun stay out of the lane on offense? Does he keep their bigs out of the lane and let Holcomb do his work trying to get underneath there? Looks like they're going with a straight up 2-3 defense. And look at that backdoor cut for, oh, oh Braun just not too. able to get a handle on it, but the ball will go to the Soaring Eagle. But I also think the reason Coach Trost called that quick timeout, they had a 25-point lead at Cedar Valley, blew it, almost lost the game, and he's not going to let them get lackadaisical here either. Looking to swing, trying to get, there we go, Valdez in the corner. Seems a little timid to get started. Yep. Left-hander goes up by Roden, unable to get it in. Going to have a foul on the Golden Eagle. Juan Diego foul number 10, David Kinnebert. Look for something down the middle of the lane. <laughs> yeah, straight 2-3. Yep. Flash probably to the basket. There we go, screen through, right through the middle. Oh. Leaving Scott open on that corner a little long. Unable to get it, going deep to Rodriguez who flashed out underneath and he's gonna get called for the travel on that one. Basketball. You wonder if he picked the ball up and then made the two hard yeah. steps. It was tough to see, I got screened off by a player there. I, I, I thought it was a good move. It looks like they're more using Braun just to Hopefully set something up. It almost high, looks like a triangle high, type offense. Yeah, high post a little yep. bit too. Just run it with the big on the corner. Valdez goes in again, unable to get anything. The ball goes to, to Tipinogas. I don't know what to think. I I want hope that Valdez has the same game the whole right. the whole thing, or is he going to get fired up and then? Well, he's a player that it's really hard to keep down. This, it seems like a very... Scott with another three! three. Scott. Romney and Scott lead it off, starting off here with long threes. I mean, that's what you want. That's a good start for Timpanogos. Like I was saying pregame, get a fast start. Well, and especially to be making baskets. Yeah. That's, that's the, the key part there. Three-point three basket there by Rubinia. Rubinia. 
Holcomb with a deep three. Off the front of the team, not going to go out there. Romney tries to tip it. Does get back to Scott to reset up that offense. Seeing Roberts is looking a little timid too. He's not used to a bigger man up in his face there. That kind of matches his height. Yeah, a little different look for him, for him huh? Offense a little slow to set something up here. Trying to find open shooter. Swinging it around. Romney again from the elbow. Ooh, just from the side, just unable to get it in. So Valdez looks to push. He's got one-on-one -on -one with Holcomb. Kicks it back out to Rodriguez. As a soaring eagle look to set it up again. Long oh. three, not good, but Valdez able to pick up that rebound. Puts up an easy two. Short again. It's 0 for 3 there. T-Wolves look to run. Oh, there should be a foul there, and there is. It should be, be a foul on Valdez. Holcomb should be shooting three at the line. There will be three shots here for Holcomb at the line. It was good. They looked to run there after getting that rebound, that long rebound, push the ball as much as possible. Get out, run, get an early basket. The other interesting thing about Coach Trost, he's also one of the assistant principals at the school, and he still teaches two classes a day as well. Talk about us. One of them being honors geometry, so you got to give him props for that one too. Jeez. Those ain't no cake classes right there. <laughs> it's a lot of work, right? Yeah. Coach, administrator, and teacher. Holcomb nails all three. T-Wolves look like they're almost in a traditional 2-3-2. Two, two. Basket unable to go down for Kinneberg. They will give you a Looking to push goal. again. Holcomb going straight up. Swatted. Does get it blocked there. Rodriguez goes up for an easy two. Romney out on the side to the top to Roberts. Resetting up the offense here again, flashing through. Ah, lazy passes. Holcomb able to save it there. He couldn't <laughs> let it go back, back court. Yeah, correct, setting it up. Ah, Baron tries to get it to Bentley underneath. T Wolf seem a little timid on the passes right now, as yeah. though nobody wants to be the one to get the offense through anything unless you are outside. So, right there, Roberts just needs to put it up, is going to get a foul. Juan Diego foul number 10, David Kinneberg. That's his second. So, that's going to be interesting because that's one of their, their taller players. Quick hands. Rapinia is going to come back in here. Rapinia back on the floor for the Soaring Eagle, replacing David Kinneberg. Gavin Scott to inbound for the T-Wolves. Same thing. A.J. Timmett, I know they eat long arms, but use your strength and your size. There we go. Kick out to Romney. Just on the back iron, ball's going around. It should be, oh wow, it's going to be on Brantley on that one. Twenty-four. The ball's in play. A little confusion, so apologize for the dead air as I'm working the scoreboard. Yes, Got to help clear things up, so. No 24. He reported 24. He reported 24. Okay. Yeah, I think he realized he got the wrong color. Oops. Who? What's it on? 14. Uh, 13. AJ. All right. Another one for AJ. Like 13 again. 
Can you check my team files, please? Two to two. Two to two. That's right. That's right. Eagle! 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 No, three to two. I had it right? Oh my goodness. Three, two. That's what I had. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Alright, sorry for the delay. We're back into action. Yeah, Valdez here at the ball as we figure things out. <laughs> oh my goodness. So many things going Good on. Good gravy. You know what we were saying? We were feeling a little tired and a little out of I, swords. I think it's I, just a. Ooh, Valdez does, shoots an air ball, not even tipped by Romney. Romney's gonna go, ooh, just, just a light feather. I like Give him a little okie doke yeah. almost as though thinking you're gonna go up high and he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep it small. I, I like that kid. Oh, good hands there by the two as they get to steal and Holcomb looks to push. No. Rebound. I hate parents when they, they they don't respect what's going on. Triple foul number one, Gavin Scott. On the floor for the T-Wolves, Nate Mace and Jackson Van Cherry replace AJ Bentley and Gavin Scott. Sometimes I wish we had fans. <laughs> so do I. Was that Valdez? So now he's getting hot, so now they should get worried. If he's going to airball and then make one perfectly on the next one. I think they hopefully he hasn't found that range. Holcomb shows up a little runner, able to get it in. Good job by Jackson. Like a... One three one three two. Also have the amoeba defense being played. So we're doing our little thing that, that tricks them out. It was funny during the JV game they were trying to figure it out too. They're like, I don't know, is this oh good. Good alley oop there up to now, Diallo. Coach's philosophy here is four seconds get a shot off. You want to get momentum back. But they were back on defense pretty quick. So I don't know if they did look at the JV game to see what the defense was like in order to get, ooh, that's gonna be one Diego ball there off the tip, or off the block. And they may have used that. On the floor for the field, Luke Maddox, replaces Mark Romney. They might have used that as a little bit of scouting to see like what are the defensive holes are based on one of the ball is. Well, and I heard the assistant with the JV head coach, that's what they were trying to work out is what was the defense in order to mm -hmm. understand. And obviously they'd relay that to Coach Trost here in order to let him know, hey, this is the defense they run. Based on where... You would think, though, I mean, and again, non-region game, maybe they're not watching film as much also. Yeah. So... And that's the thing, non-region and getting that kind of scouting out of them. I mean, teams in our region don't even know what this defense is going on. Yeah. Time. And the benefit we have, too, is little people at Valdez going through. Oh. Should be jump ball. Good defense. I like it. It's about two seconds. Hold. I'm just going to pull up from... Just outside, oh, oh, that was in and then just out. Well, that was fun. It was a good start. It's going to be interesting here. Uh, the adjustments made a quarter. Some good outside shooting there to start by the T-Wolves. Um, able to keep the Soren Eagle a little slow there on their jump shots. Valdez only had that one three-pointer, but one for five there to open the quarter in shooting. It's going to be interesting to see how he comes out here and, in the second quarter. And he, it seems like he's kind of pressing because he went in the lane with three guys around him, got into that jump ball situation that allowed us to get that last bless and the almost half-court heat from Holcomb. But so you, he, he's, yeah. like he's getting a little frustrated. Yeah, and so you wonder, is, is he still going to think about that? Can I go to the link? Can I not? Are they going to collapse and the whole defense come in that way? And you don't want shooters to think. You want shooters to shoot. Team fouls, three, three. 
Whoops. I mean, we haven't done a boys game in I know, that's what I was saying. Five weeks? We, we said that, too, when we came out here for the first games was, um, you know, it felt like forever. Yeah, like we did girls games on Tuesday, but there's just a different feel to a boys game. Because we have the other things to do. We have new responsibilities. Yeah. Let's see, Valdez puts up another one, gets that, that bucket. So he might be feeling it and realizing, hey, maybe my game's going to start from the outside here. Vancherry looks to drive. He's going to get a foul prior to getting to the basket. Juan Diego fouled over two, Matias Rodriguez. Going underneath to Roberts, putting it up again. Diallo gets another block. Two or 23? I thought he said two. There is, that would be, oh, Holcomb, you're right. My bad. I'm it's all good. <laughs> we, we, we've got a lot going on. I mean, this has been a crazy week. Parents are screaming at me because the scoreboard, of all things, is wrong. Oh, no. Parents have thought. In the first quarter. Yeah, for, oh, no. For two seconds, it's not going to be rectified later on. Maddox in the game there. Gets it up to Vaughn. Cherry, who takes a deep three, looking straight oh. on up. Doesn't quite go over. Fighting underneath. Mace unable to get a hand on it. You know, Diallo's been a spark plug for them. Yeah, because and he seemed very timid in the JV game just before. He put some time in there, too. Valdez throwing it in there, unable to get it. Diallo tips it. Welcome able to save it. Van Cherry's looking to push, hopefully find... Oh, look. Trying to find Mace in the corner and able to get it to him out of bounds. It'll be Juan Diego basketball. Just a, trying to do a little bit too much there. Got, got caught in the air. Well, that's part of the player that he is, is that he's, you know, always high energy, wants to take it to the basket. I mean, he basically brought us back in that JV game. Rodriguez tried to get in there, blocked, trying to find the hole within the defense. And I can't believe there's a person, the other parent yelled at me, put your mask on. Yeah. Of all people, right. I wear my mask more than anybody. Holcomb deep three, bouncing around, oh. not able to go in there. Tip by the T-Wolves, it'll be Juan Diego basketball. So now it looks a little bit more of a traditional 2-3. Right. Valdez getting a short runner off the side, able to get that to go in. That was a good little floater. Oh. Roberts took a long three, but... Good job. Holcomb was able to, as he's in the air, just bounce it off the Juan Diego player to retain possession. Romney sets a return here. Mark Romney replaces Luke Maddox. The smart play just bounce it off his head. Uh-oh, what do we got? A legal screen here going on by the T-Wolves. So Mace there pushing his way through, and it's not there. I, I, it, I just, I can't. And the worst part is, is that since there's less people in there, yes. I'm sure it's being picked up by the mics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I miss having a rowdy crowd, students loud. Where I don't have to hear what's going on yes. behind me as much. Yes. Trust me, the headphones help, but. Not as much in the quiet arena. Nope. Like I, like I said, I think the microphone's picking up. We can hear it more. No foul, no nothing. Hmm. Bodies flying everywhere, arms on people. <laughs> it's like Antietam out there and everything. <laughs> it's gravy. Oh, Romney. Oh, I couldn't tell if there was a piece gun there. Oh, man, Cherry oh. gets real and puts it back up and gets it blocked. It should stay with the T-Wolves. 
That was, well, that was a one heck of a series there. It was. David Peterson's coming in now for the first time in the game. So a little bit smaller lineup, taking Roberts out. Bentley's out as well. Putting pretty much Holcomb as the tallest player, maybe up there with Peterson as well. Smart job by Romney not to get that backcourt yeah. set. Let it go, get yourself settled, don't try and force anything. Holcomb flash spin down the middle, left hand goes up and it's good. Getting screen, can't really see. Valdez in the corner. Oh. Puts up a three just off the front iron. Man. Almost had a chance for a rebound. Oh, probably going to have a foul underneath here. Evan, Evan Wigton, who had just come in, picks up his first foul. If the player has the ball, I can't call you in. Oh. Underneath. Oh, okay. Peterson able to get underneath to throw one up and under. Nice little move for Dave. Well, especially where he was trapped almost dead center underneath the basket. Which the defender may have known and was unable, you know, themselves thinking he's going to come out right. to, to go in. Valdez top one, spins, dude. puts it up long. Wow. He, he is now about one for eight or nine at this point. Tip to stay with Teagle's ball. Teagle basketball. Back on the floor for the Soaring Eagle, Colin Valdez. Correction, Malik Diallo, and Mario Rubinia. Also checking in, Jag Gil Martin. Golden Eagle sub three, so it's gonna be interesting if they see a matchup with, with our lineup being smaller and faster. Are they trying to match it? Ooh, almost. Nah, uh, nah. trying to get contact. Holcomb's not afraid though, but got close that he didn't get called for the arm bark. No, coming out there. Yellow's just been Rudy Gobert down low. This must be the defensive group because that is some tight defense by the Golden Eagle. Long rebound, Holcomb's able to grab that. Skips across to Van Cherry. Van Cherry puts one straight up from where his position. It's not a bad shot, almost went Valdez down. releases, going up for, gets the easy two. Well, the problem with Van Cherry is that he, he needs a shot like that, right? He can't just do it standing still. Needs a little set. Mace looks to, yep. to push. He's a set shot. Right? He just seemed very flat-footed on that yep. one. Even if he had just taken one dribble and put it up. Just a catch and shoot. Yep, yep like this. Let's see. See? I think he heard you. That's I know. I guess he must have heard me, you but that, that's exactly what he needs. Keep saying stuff. <laughs> We got Mojo, man. Kevin Scott to set to check back in. Trying to probe the defense. Valdez with the long three bounces off the front iron as Holcomb's able to grab the rebound. Look enough to see someone does have Romney in the corner. Not sure if anyone sees him. Oh, Peterson was there too. There's definitely a lot of chess going on right now yeah. too of, Match of matchups as who's in, right? Uh oh. Same same thought process because he knew he had to let it go, but. A little hard more, harder. Get behind, get behind the ball and let it come to you. Yeah, a little court. stronger of a pass on that one. Yep. But this is the floor of shooters right now, if you think about it. All five players oh. on the floor. Oh, get, oh that's going to be all fit. Holcomb, Juan Diego ball. But yeah, this this is our floor of shooters right now, including Roberts being yeah. the tallest on the court for uh, the T Wolves. I mean, yeah, I. You can go five out right there, and I'd be happy with any of those guys taking a shot. Well, and it's interesting. If you look at it right now, Scott's basically playing the three yeah. when he's normally been a two for us. <laughs> right, or even the one. And the defense is extending it out there. Again, bodies on the floor. 
Yeah. No call. He's going to have trouble to three steps there. As Rupinia trying to get through the mess underneath takes one too many steps. One nineteen left. Oh, Gavin didn't have his feet underneath him there. Jack Gil Martin there, just trying to look for something to get hands in. Oh. Man, Cherry, stop, stop, push, jump, wow! Great, great stop, jump, moving underneath by Van Cherry to get get in there. I might draw Diallo at me, at me, and then do a quick pass underneath, like almost well, crash. Yeah, and have someone flash there too, because yeah. he's going to come and take anybody that comes to the lane. Oh, another. He, he, he's, up. Just, he's just looking for blocks. Yeah. So I'd use that to our advantage. Or pump and get him up in the air and then go Correct. So even, foul. look, if we see bronze on the low block, right? Yeah. So even to attack from this left side, coming straight down the lane, and as Diallo crashes to you, should be an easy bucket underneath. Because I haven't really seen them roll in transition. Gavin, get inside. Get inside. Nine seconds left on the clock. Five seconds. Double screen trying to hear that uh, it's going to be double dribble. Move. I don't know about that. Ref said that Scott had, didn't have his feet set and kept trying to move to get position. It's kind of weird though too. Those are some tight screens to even have Holcomb try and go through at this point. Yep. Long shot, no good. Just clearing some things up there on the scoreboard. Thoughts on the first half, Schultz? Really good first half. Just what we wanted to do, start well, have Valdez not hit his shots. Overall, I thought it was a great defensive effort. Both ends of the ball playing well. Definitely going to be a, an adjustment at half to see which each team will do and whether or not they've figured out um, the defense that we're running and vice versa with those matchups like we were talking about at Diallo at the end. Look forward to a good second half. Stay with us there. T Wolf then. Yeah. 
Still stop it though. Stop it for the cover. He's got it. Well, I know we're hot mics still, but yeah. we, we didn't use any timeouts either that first half. No, we didn't. So, interesting and, how that's going to play only, out. And the, yeah. the only timeout was that one. The, off the first possession. Yeah. Huh. I mean, pretty quick first quarter, first half, really. I mean, yeah, being up by six yeah. is good. I mean, it might not be the points you want, but if you're keeping them at six, 16. If you're keeping this team at 16 in the first half. Well, I think if you tell Coach Ingle down at the beginning, you, you know, you're going to hold Juan Diego to 16 points in the first half. He'll, he's not even asked how many points he's And Valdez at what? Has he got five or seven? I, I would say maybe seven points. And still three of like 11 shooting? Yeah. But then, what? you know, we'll go look at the book and probably have 12 or 13 points, you know. It's yeah. like a quiet, you know. I mean, I would think, honestly, he probably has 11 points thinking about it because I don't think I've said his name, any other names very much. Well, and they're not making butt baskets underneath. No. Well, a little bigger vibe. There's, I, I feel like there's students in here who somehow got in on an extra ticket. Yep. Maybe by a cheerleader or a... TDT dancer. I, I, I would guess by a cheerleader. All right, about a minute here until the second half starts. What are you looking forward to? I mean, I'm looking for another great half. I think we, when Diallo goes in, he was kind of a defensive stopper for them. We need to have something to counteract his defensive presence. Because other than that, I think we've done a really good job offensively. I honestly think it's just basic basketball. It's yep. going to be making buckets and stopping on the defensive end. That's it. That's what it's going to take. Agreed. Like we're gonna start with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
I'm looking at them. This is our biggest crowd we've had. I mean, we've only had, well, no, we had mo more than one boys game, didn't we? No, just one. Just one? This is At our Maple second? Mount Maple Mountain game. Wow. Because they've been on the road for like 18 months, it seems like. I think they were over on the plains with Brigham Young. So far away from home. They were just looking at you, waiting for you to turn I, the music I, I off. Go up right to the whistle. <laughs> Looks like the Jazz are up seven with a buck forty left in the game. Perfect. Hopefully the same result. Oh, woof. Got lucky. Holcomb shot. Probably yep. got tipped. Is going to get yep. fouled there in the corner. What's the number one rule on defense? Don't foul a jump shooter. Juan Diego foul number five. Maui Rubinia. Holcomb shoots three. This is the second time they fell the three-point yeah. shot, right? And Holcomb. He did make all the, the first set. Knock on wood real quick. It is quiet. Yeah. I mean, I felt like we were broadcasting the Masters for a second. <laughs> Holcomb on the eight. And Holcomb three. goes up to the line. <laughs> it's on line. That's why sometimes, and I know they do it, is at least the main broadcaster should just yell and scream yeah. in golf. Right. Like, right, they're in a booth. They know, no one's going to hear them. Especially now, they got to be distanced, right? they got to be watching from a secret location. By the way, who do you got tomorrow? Bills, Colts? Bills. Bills. The team is, I think, the. oh, Hulk misses that one. Most underestimated and definitely underrated team in the AFC. I mean, I'm happy for Sean McDermott, former Carolina Panther coach. He was a head coach, was he? He was the defensive coordinator okay. in the Super Bowl. Oh. Rode in there with a little short hook. Oh, man, Cherry's starting the second half because yeah, he's going up hard and strong just like that. Got the second half start over Bentley. And not, not a, nothing of Bentley's fault, just Jackson's earned it. Well, and, and not just that. Obviously, we're, we're seeing how the, the matchup works offense-defense that we don't need the big guy, per se. Because if we can drive into there, that's what's going to cause the problems. Ooh, Roberts comes out to get the easy bucket David Kinneberg. for Kinneberg to, to flash underneath. Good passing movement. Romney out on the corner. Good three. Talk with Coach Ingle last week. He has loved the way Romney's come into this team and just done what he's doing. And I've only heard good things. Even teachers love having him in class as well. But he's just a good guy and brought a good vibe to, mm -hmm. to the campus here at Timpanogos. It just seems like Juan Diego is just timid. As Rodriguez throws up a three, but unable to get it to go right. in. Not probing, no probing drives. No. And again, right. it's, we don't have the height. They're used to smaller people. Holcomb throwing up one, ah, just not able to get it down. Roberts gets his rebound and puts it right back in, plus one. One nigga foul number 24, Matt Roden. Roberts, shoots one. What I like right now, too, like we were talking about those kind of almost yep, I was just lackadaisical passes. The passes are just crisp right now. I was just about to say, look for Diallo to come in. And there he is. Yep. I mean, we've been getting our way at the basket. I'd, I'd put him in, too. And he's had three blocks already. Yeah. So you know it's lingering in the T-Wolves' minds. Be careful. That, that yeah. there's somebody, he's underneath there. You're going in with the Paul Redwoods if you're going down the lane. Yeah, you, you better bring a big axe. Yeah, you, yeah, you better bring a big axe. See, still just not finding what they want. And they've got Rodriguez, not the tallest guy, that's flashing to the, the hole in the zone. Well, does. Stops, cuts, jumps, throws it up. Is short again. Good rebound. Roden gets that rebound with the long three. Still not falling. They just cannot make a bucket, but we're going to have a foul underneath. One hit foul number 13, Malik Diallo. That kid's a freshman. Diallo? Yes. Good gravy. He's going to be a great player. 
Well, and it's like tale of two cities because in the last game, he was all offense. Mm -hmm. And in this game, it's all, all defense. defense. So it's kind of like he, he plays to where he's... He plays the role that the coach need him to play, which yeah. is what he wants. So good flash. Holcomb's not afraid. Man, Did take defense. some steps, just but good, defense. good body. Valdez flashes out. No one's there to stop him. Gets an easy two. We got lucky. That should technically be, that should be a technical. Super slap in the backboard. Yeah. Yep. At least I assume. I don't know in Utah, but in most high school, I, even I, college. I thought, I thought I've seen it called once, but. Good set play there, Romney. Not able to get quite open. This is, this feels very. Woo, another three by Romney. It seems like a high school version of a three, the triangle offense. Yeah. Right? We're putting someone right there and just at the corner, at the, the top of, of the line, free throw line, and just pass out, rotate through, find the hole. Wow. Long shot. Oh, good, good there by Roden. Man, Diallo has really been saving them. Well, this with a long three off the left side. Well, long. And I, oh, wow. Romney flashing Perry all by Mickey. himself with an easy two. Juan Diego's going to call a timeout here. As the Teals are up 15 here with four minutes to go. This, you know, this is the play you want to see against a high caliber team like this. Man, what was the halftime lead? We were up by seven. Yeah, man. You know, we're up by 15, so. We're just playing, we're playing just Chris, well, they basketball. only have, and Juan Diego only has one field goal. Yeah, I was gonna, they have six points. Oh no, yeah, because we had them at 16 points mm -hmm. at the half. Oh, was it 16 there? Oh, you're right, so I'm sorry. They, I think they've got, So right? they got a couple field goals, yeah. I apologize. Well, but it's been a very quiet four minutes for them. It so was, far. well, yeah, 22-16, yeah. right, is what it was? Yeah, 22-16 and a half. Going around there, a lot of steps. Roden good goes seal. up strong and able to get the two. That was a good seal off by Diallo. I'm, I like that kid. Good seal to allow the drive to happen. Bentley's going to check in. Again, probably because we're seeing a height mismatch somewhere, yep. especially on the defensive side of the ball. Vancherry looks to drive, gets in the middle, goes up on Diallo, looking to get contact, and is able to get it. It's going to be Diallo second. Two more left. On the floor for two of A.J. Bentley replaces Gavin Scott. What I like right there is the ref coming over and explaining what he saw exactly. Can't yeah. go, you know, can't slide underneath an airborne shooter. I like that. No animosity there. The coach asking the question. Well, that's what you do. You tell them what you see. Yeah. We talked about and the that coach, many times Yeah, and the coaches, reason. coaches appreciate that. Yeah. Even if it's not in your favor, at least you have an understanding. At least you can see their reasoning and maybe coach that up, like we've, like we've talked about many times in our own conversations. Well, it's a coaching moment because then you know the coaching staff is going to sit with Diallo and say, "Hey, keep your feet. Yeah. Keep your feet still. Hey, if he cool. jumps into you, then that's not on you." Yeah. Valdez flashes to the side, back out to the top to Kinneberg. Ooh, good defensive rotation from the T-Wolves. Yeah. Gil Milton, Martin, and able to hold the pass, but gets it back to Valdez. Yeah, look at this. Defense, this is a long possession for Juan Diego. They got nothing. They can't find a thing. And the crowd knows it. You can hear the crowd behind. They know that defense is stepping up, and there's nothing there. Kinneberg flashes, gets oh. in, and gets it. David Kinneberg. You know what, though? Good defensive possession. Yeah, I mean, it took them a long amount of time to get into the lane. Pantry like. waits to get the play set up here. Play it, play it, play it. 
Here's that triangle type yep. thing, right? Rotating around the guys. You're exactly Swing right. it to the other side, and here comes Holcomb right to the other side. It is. Yeah. It is just your basic triangle offense. Perfect. Van Cherry oh, wide open at the top, able to get the three. Okay. And it's amazing because you don't really talk triangle offense unless it's oof, Three point. answer returned by Gil Martin. By Gil Martin. Right. You know, unless you you're talking 90s Bulls. You're talking Phil Jackson. You know. Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen. Well, remember, it wasn't Phil Jackson's triangle. Yes. Tex Winter. Tex Winter. Oh, nice underneath by Holcomb. Oh, cool. And that time you kind of use it as a decoy and drive to the lane because they you kind of rope a dope, right? Little okie doke. And you wonder too, are we physically wearing out Juan Diego? Right? I mean. Because they're not subbing as much. Valdez flashes, gets that too. Talon Valdez. Well, like we've talked about, that's what coaching wants to do. He wants to wear you out. And he makes sure our boys are very. Their endurance is up. Wow, oh, bad pass there. I couldn't work right then. I'm a believer of that too. If you are a better physically conditioned team, nice. Dial wasn't looking. Oh, Romney unable to get that. Bounces off the top and not far enough over. It's almost been like watching Steph, Steph Curry. Up to the corner. Quick three by Gil Martin. Does not go in. Holcomb grabs that rebound. Ooh, Roberts out on the edge, thought about it. Ooh. Looking to double. Just gonna play for the last shot here. 10 seconds in the third quarter. Back out to Van Cherry. Setting up that three. Holcomb goes straight up on Diallo, no basket. Offensive foul there. Two point four seconds here as Juan Diego looks to inbound underneath the Timpanogos baseline. It's gonna be fast. Mace puts his hands up, able to get there. Gil Martin throws one up, not does not go in. Well, eight more minutes of fun. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's been a great game for the t -Rules. Well, what we talked about, basically, right? Make baskets and good defense. Yeah. I mean, that's what we said from the beginning. That we said get a good start. They came out both halves with a good start. Definitely quarter of Romney there. Absolutely. In third quarter. Right? right. And defense. Like, we had that one possession that seemed to take about six minutes off the clock. The defensive intensity's ratcheted up, which has helped us offensively. Yeah, even if they're going to make that bucket, if you're taking anywhere to a minute off and you're up by, you know, 13, that works in your favor. Yeah, you're winning You're winning the war. You may not have won that battle, but overall, you're winning the war. And I think defensively, we played a great game tonight. And to keep a shooter like Valdez to whatever he has right now, I'd be interested to see what the box score looks like after this one. Because we have definitely done our job on him and trying to make someone else beat us. And so far, no one stepped up. And he might still be close. I mean, it should have kept track here. Yeah. He might be close to those 20 points. A and he might. But it's not impactful. No, no, it, it is it, not changing the game in any way, shape, or form. It's not a loud 20. It's like those games you see in the NBA where you got quiet 25 points, you know? Right. But then the other thing, too, is if he's scoring 20 and the rest are doing nothing, so. Yeah. Again, already hesitant on an easy, you know, opening play and not sure where where to go with the ball. Valdez showing out the long three, still off the front rim, not able to find his shot. Mace grabs that rebound. And if, I, if I've seen anything so far, I think that is the weak spot in our defense right now, though. Get it across the line. There we go. Ooh. So there, yep. It's all right, there's a hole in that thing anyway. Yeah. One Diego foul number 24, Matt Roden. It's three. It's three, go ahead. 
bring in a little half court pressure. They've got to. They've got to, you know, speed up the game. force turnovers. Because right now, again, with Utah basketball, you can hold the ball as long as you want. You can hold it for the Oh, look at Valdez. Oh, it's going to be on Valdez. Juan Diego Valdez. You've got to be on your game with passes right now. Right now, Holcomb getting a rest. Well, this is this is an interesting lineup too, because you know, oh, Mace with the long three off the left elbow, not able to get it. Because you've got Nathan Mace, who's gonna go flying everywhere to get a ball, like we just saw. Valdez flying everywhere, not able to get it in. We'll get two shots. Simple foul number twelve, Mark Romney. Valdez shoots two. Well, I thought that was an NBA continuation right there. I know, and when we didn't get one on the other side. Oof. Holcomb going to check back in here. Valdez makes the first. Back in for the two old Jackson Holcomb. He places A.J. Bentley. Because now even in... Is, yeah, is Luke Maddox come out? Did I miss that? Yeah, I guess he did. Thought he was out there too. Valdez has a definitely interesting release mm -hmm. on his shot. Right, like I mean, there's always like a, a flick, bit. but it's very yeah. like Still stiff to yeah. to go real fast. Yeah, it was effective. He made both free throws. And this is something I know that the T Wolves work on all the time. Romney in the corner, able to get it three. Sorry, I missed the three card. Given hey, Romney in his spot tonight. In that far corner. That kid's been solid. I like him a lot. Well, there's nothing out there. It's kind of like it's quiet. You've got your easy spot. Yeah, right. Just you and the hoop. Again, they're trying to get Valdez over here on the left wing. And they're trying to swing it. And it's now, now it's our funky 2-3 because Mace keeps popping out and flashing to the, the shooter there. Right, see? Boom, and then Romney should come underneath. Oh, able to get it there that time Jack, Gil by Gil Martin. Good look there, Mace underneath for two. Mace. That was that was a smart play yep. by Nathan Mace there. Yep. Saw the collapse and everyone coming out. He's going to make a run for the basket, and Manchuri able to get him the pass. Thought he had the hot hand, able to get that. We were in the bonus. T Wolves are in the bonus, will be shooting free throws from here on out. One on one, we're up to in the bonus. I think this is where we're gonna have to win the game too in the fourth quarter. Yeah. It's definitely at the free throw, free throw line. line. Gotta make your foul pitches. Hawks out now. Makes the first, puts the T Wolves up by 14. 527 here left in the game. <laughs> Jackson giving himself five there. <laughs> I've seen that a couple times too, especially in the COVID era. Some yeah. people want to, some people don't. Yep. Able to put down both. See, and they're they're trying to do that flash. Valdez finding that hole, just can't get his shots to go down. Mace again. Uh, wanted to go, but yeah. made the smart move. Romney was down there, ready to fire. Yep. But again, what's our yep. best friend is the what right is, now? Yep. The clock is your friend. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. See, that's when. See, that's where they had their that opportunity a, to trap Holcomb. Pass too, like get him up in the air and then pass it. And they had that chance to get Holcomb trapped and unable to do it. So again, right here, they have it. Juan Diego foul number two. Matthias Rodriguez. Eight to two on the fouls. We're not that much more aggressive than that. Man, Cherry shoots one and one. 
You can tell the difference now that we're allowing four, four extra, four tickets per player. Yes. De definitely a little more energy. It feels a little more. A little more. Let's not get too. No, no, but but compared to what it, it felt like we were playing, you know, in a in a church gym against Maple Mountain. On Sunday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Could you imagine? Those would be some dirty looks. <laughs> Just pull the screen. <laughs> Valdez, yep. Definitely some contact in there. And it does look like Valdez is trying to be a little bit more the aggressor at this point, realizing, hey, well, no one else is making buckets. Yeah. I'm going to have to do it myself. Rodin oh. goes in, unable to get it. Holcomb is sure he's looking to, uh, he's going to get trapped. They've got two guys there, yep. you got to keep your hand. Rodriguez up. reached in on there. One on one again. Let's, let's not do that while we're shooting free throws, ladies. <laughs> I think they had the realization. Wait, let's yes, stay the, quiet. Their game awareness stepped in. Their offensive awareness. Their Madden score went up from 75 to 80 on that one. I will say, though, I, I, I was impressed there when on that long defensive series that the crowd realized yes. and applaud, the importance of the it effort. and all that. Because you, usually there's, yes. there's not much... Game knowledge at football games Absolutely. and basketball games. When it seemed like they played a little harder when they heard that too, you know. Like yeah. You, you get well, that of course, kind of and that's the thing I'm always for is, you know, you play Valdez deep three at the top is able to get that to go in. Three points, Talon Valdez. Timeout, Juan Diego. Full. Full timeout. But, I mean, you've played in coach. You know when you hear that and you know that you're doing something well. Yeah, and that's usually when coaching goes up off the bench, like clapping with them, you know, like getting them into Yeah, it. because they feel it. Yeah. I mean, that's the part of being an athlete is you can tell the vibe when something's coming at you and, you can feel and it, react to it appropriately. It feels like a train almost, like a train of momentum. Like you just feel that surge of energy too with it. Like it, you almost get in that zone, you know. We've, we've heard about the zone. But yeah, when, when your defense is playing as good as your offense and you're in that locked-in zone, man, nothing feels better. 403 here left in the fourth. Get ready. It's going to be a lot of free throws. Yeah, get ready for probably just a steady line. Next one, Diego. Uh, foul will put us in the double bonus. We'll be shooting two from here on out. Two shots. You asked me the first game, what about the, you know which game I really want, you want, want to talk about for tomorrow. Wh wh which one is that? I don't, I don't know, which one? Is, is that a team from Los Angeles? Yeah, the second game. The Chargers don't play tomorrow. <laughs> they don't play any Sunday, what are you talking about? <laughs> there we go. Good. Good coaching in the timeout by Coach Ingle to, to know how to beat that press and put his players where they need to be. Romney in his spot. And it's good. Romney. At this point, they might as well just put a defensive player there, even if Romney's not standing yep. there. <laughs> yep. Just stick him on that baseline three. Long three by Rodriguez. Not able to go in. Well, opposite corner this time. Oh, oh. not able to get it in. He does have five threes tonight so far. I'm surprised it's only five. <laughs> Slacker. Oh, that kid's been awesome tonight. It's like when you build one of those players on 2K that's got 99 overall and 99 from three. Just hit that shoot. And they're 6'10". Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Valdez going up and underneath and able to get that in. There we go, beating that press. Uh, oh, oh no, no. 
And look for Valdez just to go. Well, oh, he pulls it back out. I thought he might, even if it was one on one three. One on three, yep. <laughs> I mean, he is a playmaker, you know. So look at Valdez is going to take the long three with that interesting shooting style, man. It's, a little, it's got a little hitch to it. A little flick, and it comes across where he almost like puts yeah. his right hand on top of his left after he's oh, done. Oh, I thought Romney was going to pull that trigger. No. I, but he thought better of it. He's smart. He knows. He's like, yeah, it's there, but. A little game awareness. Oh. Good hands Good there hustle. by Juan Diego. Good hustle. We're able to get a timeout. Timonogus. Boom. Song should I play? Well, we're up 17 with just over two minutes left. I mean, I, I thought we'd play well tonight, but I did not. I thought this could be could have been a trap game after you know, it was like the Orem game last year. We had that double overtime win in Orem, come back and lay an egg to Mountain View. This is not this no. is miles ahead of where that Mountain View team was last year. But you can't have that trap game. It's an on region. You're coming off an emotional come from behind victory. Uh, but I will say this: the personality of this team is very different yes. than last year's team. Yes. Very different, I think. A, 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 a thousand percent. I mean, having Ro I, I think Romney's been a revelation. I'm just sad. He's well, and I mean. Might not be his game this time, but Braun Roberts, too, changes the dynamics with his height and his ability to shoot from outside if need be. Well, that's what Romney brings is that third guy you have to take care of, right? Because you do have Braun, you do have Jackson, you usually have to worry about. I mind it. I, I mean, I like the tight defense. Like, yeah. With, oh, that's yep. going to be the trouble, yes. Traveling violation, Juan Diego basketball. Holcomb knew it just half a second yep. too yeah, late. He, he, he let go of the ball and he's like, you know what? Got caught with my hand in the cookie jar. Juan Diego definitely looking to push. There's that flash to the free throw. Ah, the Ooh. rotation was much better there. Mace knew it. Oh, look at Mace just flying over the top. Got his hand on the ball at this point. It's like a fumble. He's just put. Held ball. It was like football. He's like, I'm just going to get in the cradle fetal position. Just cover that and fumble. Just, put a, yeah. just cover that fumble. You go ahead and put your finger on it. We'll take the jump ball at this point. <laughs> yeah, or hope coach calls timeout. There we go. Get across, Jackson. Oh, okay. I thought he bodied. There we go. Nope, nope. Just then a smart the play ball. by Venturi. Yep. You know, any other game he would put it up. Yep. Mace getting his shot out there, a little long. Oh, cleaned up. Oh, right underneath to Braun Roberts. Oh, Easy Robert. too. Oh. Wow, that is cleaning up some track. There was, n there was no blue jerseys under the basket. If you the, gotta crash the boards at this point. Well, you, you have to sell out. Like you're saying, yes, absolutely. You have, yes, you can't give. I mean, I, I know we're talking about them, but you can't give the other team any more opportunities than they already have. Especially when, with the lead. Yeah, you're down by 19 at this point with 102 left in the game. Looks like this one's all. This one's done. It's oh, another game. easy two dunk by Ron oh, Roberts. This has definitely got to help T Wolves RPI ranking. A thousand percent beating an eight and one team. Absolutely. Long three, not able to go in for Rodriguez. Good rebound by Roberts. It's gonna have some junk time. Oh, oh, Van oh. Cherry dribbles it off of his foot. It would be Juan Diego basketball. Scott. Full hockey line change. Line change. Great job by the T Wolves, especially in the second half to put that away. 40 points in the second half. Yeah, there wasn't much difference from first to second half. Yeah. You have, if you're Coach Ingles, you've got to applaud the team for being consistent. You know, and the hardest thing in high school sports is these athletes can be so inconsistent because they're teenagers, but this, that's a travel. Nope, gonna have a foul. Should mm. be before the shot. Underneath, yep. But I mean, yeah. if I was a coach, that I'm thoroughly impressed that from start to finish, 
both sides of the ball were exactly the same for four quarters. Yeah, I, I thought it, there wasn't any let-ups. And we got better offensively as the game went on. Easy two underneath there for Roden. That'll do it. Ladies and gentlemen, about five seconds left here. T-Wolves win 62-43 with a huge win of one of the top teams that you even mentioned. That's a ball game. Final score, T-Wolves 62, Soaring Eagle 43. Yeah, what a great win. You had mentioned how they're ranked nationally within the state and otherwise Big to win. just come out, right? Big win. I'm going to go get Coach Eagle for an interview. All right, as Schultz leaves, again, hopefully going to talk to him about the consistency. Go ahead and follow Schultz over and get words from Coach Ingle. We're here with Coach Ingle. Coach, what a win, dominating from beginning to end. Held Valdez in check. What was the key to tonight's victory? Um, I think just team. I guess the one thing I can think of is, is our team, right? We, we have a lot of guys that can do a lot of things. Um, we all just believe in each other. Everybody just did their role and did it to the best of their abilities tonight. Like we really just played together great on defense, moved the ball well on offense. Like it was just a top to bottom team effort. One, one thing me and Bertrand were talking about over there, that defensive possession that seemed to take five minutes off the clock. What, what, what do you feel like as a coach when that's happening defensively? Like, are you just a proud pop at that moment? <laughs> Yeah, really, a, a lot of times. Um, you know, like with them, they have a couple really good shooters, and I think that was the time where they both happened to not be in the game at the same time. So it took them, a, you know, a second to, to realize what they were going to try to do to beat us without their shooters in. Um, but, yeah, when our guys can keep their hands up for 45 seconds, that's amazing. It's a heck of a win, Coach. Congratulations. Enjoy your weekend. No, I didn't, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't know. Oh, I like what they're yeah. 